What are you so nervous about, Doyle? You'd have the jitters, too, if you'd been kept under lock and key for as long as I have. You don't know how lucky you are that you're alive. Perfect job. It's finished, isn't it? Yes. Nothing more I can do with it. This is the best plate I've ever had. I hope you'll stick to your promise now and turn me loose. What? So you can turn the heat on us? Sharp, I give you my solemn promise I won't send the federal men after you. <laughs> A lot of good it would do if you did. All they'd find would be a respectable mining engineer. Listen, Doyle, I've been in this racket a long time, and I haven't been caught yet. Now, there's some smart men in the Federal Service, but there's always somebody just a little bit smarter. These plates are perfect, but they'll be detected. And while your G-men are watching every modern means of transportation, We'll be sending one million dollars a month out of this mountain by pack horse. I assure you, I'll do nothing to interfere with your operations if you'll only let me go. You remember Jim Green, don't you? He was an engraver like you. He was with me for over a year. Then he got the idea that he wanted to leave. He did. In a pine box. You know those two G-men we caught snooping around here about two weeks ago? <laughs> Maybe I better not tell you what have them. Boy, if Mr. Doyle here doesn't seem to like our company, maybe we better check him out. You still want to leave? All right. I'll stay. Now you're showing some sense. Get started on a new $10 plate. Boys, get those presses rolling. This is the amount allotted to you for your territory, all right? Be sure you watch your step. OK, Marty. Just a moment, sir. This $20 bill is a counterfeit. This all amounts to $1.42. Can you change one of these $20 bills? Why, this is one of those counterfeit 20s. Send out a notice to all the newspapers, the usual form, warning the public against this counterfeit bill and explaining how to detect it. United States Silver Certificate, serial number D134871. That's a beautiful job of engraving. The more I examine this bill, the more it looks like Pat Doyle's work. I wonder if Pat could have turned crooked. Hey, here's something peculiar. Hand me that atlas there.
Well, Chief, this breaks the only trail we had. It brings us right up against the stone wall. What do you think's going to happen when the papers get a hold of this? Oh, I'm not worried about the papers. Well, if you're not, you should be. We traced them to St. Louis, but we got there too late. Then we tracked them to Seattle, and they got away again. And now they're holed up somewhere in the West. We're always a couple of jumps behind them. When are you going to catch up with them? Well, I thought that... Talk won't get us anything. Action is what I want. You don't want it any more than I do. In the last three weeks, we picked up ten of their passers. Yes, I know all about that. But the plates are the things we want. Without them, we're lost. What you need on this case is a man who is familiar with the West. That's a tough country for city train men to get around in. Gordon and Flynn are proof of that. I've already sent for the only man that can fill the job. Tim Hayes. Yes? Miss Doyle is here again to see you. Well, tell her there isn't any news. I can't see her. Why isn't there any news? I'm sorry, Miss Doyle, but there just isn't. Oh, Miss Doyle, Chief McGregor. How do you do? How do you do, Miss Doyle? But surely you must have learned something about my father. Well, now, it isn't as easy as you think. Well, I know nothing is easy. But surely with an organization such as yours, you must have found some trace of him. Take my word for it, please. We're doing everything we can to find your father. We'll find him. But when? I don't know. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know you were busy. It's all right. Come in. Oh, Rogers, this is Miss Doyle. How do you, How do, you do? do? Good morning, Chief McGregor. Oh, Rogers. I told you this looked like Doyle's work. He certainly did his best to tip us all. What do you mean? Look at the right-hand corner of this bill. Look closely. The writing's small enough to fit on the head of a pen. T. O. P. E. C. Topek. What does that mean? Topek's the name of a town in Arizona near the border. That's where they're probably holding Doyle, either in the town or near it. Why, that's the first good news we've had for a long time. Well, I guess I'll be running along now, Mr. Matthews. I won't be bothering you anymore. I'll keep in touch with you, and I'll let you know all the developments. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye-bye. That's the break we've been waiting for. From now on, it looks like easy sailing. Yes, what is it? Tim Hayes is reporting, sir. Send him in. Well, now we're going to get somewhere. Hayes is the only man for this job. Hello, Chief. Rogers. Hello, Hello there. Tim. How are you, Matthew? Tim. I understand you're trying to get in touch with me. Well, you don't know how glad I am to see you. That was nice work you did, Rogers. Well, it's taken quite a while, but I think we're on the right track now. I'll say we are. That was a nice job you did on the Miller case. Not so fast now. Are you forgetting I'm due for a vacation? Well, how would you like to take it down on the border? The border? With all expenses paid. <laughs> I thought there was a catch to it somewhere. Where'd you get that hay? We've been raking it in for months. Rogers has just pointed out that down on the lower edge of this bill is very minutely marked the word Topek. We have reason to believe that it means the town of Topek, Arizona, and that the counterfeiters are now operating from there. Do you know the place? Know it very well. It's located down near the southern part of the state. Ideal spot for them to make a quick getaway in case things got too hot. But that works to our advantage, too. What do you mean? The town's completely cut off by a mountain range. If they're operating there, all shipments have got to come out through Eagle Rock. Well, then you can use uh, Garson and Phoenix for your contact and handle things your own way. All right. Here's a file containing all the data collected up to date. Boss have been hijacked again. By who? By the same Umri who hijacked the last two shipments. That's the third time this month. Fine bunch of gunmen you are, letting one man make a monkey out of all of you. This keeps up, we'll be working for him. They never stopped me yet, Chief. You never had a guy hop out at you from nowhere, have you? They don't do that to me. Oh, forget it. 
Bud, I'm leaving this up to you. This shipment's got to get through. I'll deliver it, boss. What are you sticking us up for? We ain't got anything. This ain't a stick up. We're federal men. Take a look through those saddlebags, Reynolds. You're only wasting your time. There's at least 50 grand here, all in 20s. Turn around, you fellas. Keep your hands away from your guns. I'll take that 50 grand you're talking about. I said I'd take that money. This kind of money won't do you any good. Never mind, hand it over. Say, that's our money. You mean it was? Now dig out the rest of it. And be sure that's all you dig out. For your own sake, I hope you don't find a six-shooter in that pack. Listen, mister, we worked pretty hard for this dough. Foolish, weren't you? Put it in there. Thanks. That's more than I expected. Why be the whole hog? Meaning, we'll split. <laughs> we already have. Now get on your horses. I'm going to ride herd on you fellas for a while. Hold up. Here's as far as we go. Hit the dirt. Get down. Now come over here. Get away from your horses. Hey, how do you expect us to get back to town? You've got a pretty good pair of legs. Start walking. You can't get away with this. Why, the big boss will... Hey, shut up. While you fellas are hot-footing it through the mountains, just think of me in Topek. 
spending all your money. I'll get started. Oh, hey, not that way. Other way. Think we can get up now? I hope so. This sun is killing me. Yeah, they're gone. If this little play doesn't set Tim in right, nothing else will. Well, if this is what a G-man has to do, I'm glad I'm just a cowpuncher. If those two fellows find out you've been impersonating an officer, they're liable to have you arrested. Huh? <laughs> That's a brink. A couple of saddle horses. Come on. Hey, Jeff. If this hombre ain't bluffing and shows up in Topek, he'll get a greeting he won't expect. Yeah. Get over there. I'm buying a drink. Get the dust out of your throat. Come on. Come on. Oh. Jesus is muy amable, senor. Oh, Mexican. <laughs> Poco tequila. Oh, but tequila, mucha, huh? Mucha tequila. Uh, all the way from Chihuahua. I know you're a great big black eyed Venus. And you're, uh, wait a minute. Big black eyed Venus. Or black. Well, anyway, your eyes are black and you're a Venus. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, introducing our latest sensation, Senorita Dolores. Give the wild girl from the Pampers the great big hand! <laughs> the gods have sent to us. <laughs> your business has picked up, Charlie, since you hired Dolores. She's not bad at all. He blew in yesterday. He's backing her play at the gambling table. Thank you. 
Bravo, senorita, bravo. Hey, you like my dance, senor? Oh, you're a second tableau. You're marvelous. <laughs> but you shouldn't be dancing in a place like this. You should be dancing in the big city. You think they like me, eh? Like you? <laughs> They'd be crazy about you. Listen to this gang here. You think maybe you take me to the big city someday, eh, senor? Maybe. Someday. <laughs> Dance again? Oh, not now. Later, later. But my friends, they want me to dance. Oh, these people? <laughs> well, I'll fix them. <laughs> Come on, fine, fine, Rick, here. with his money. Well, oh, those monkeys scramble. You think they want to see you dance now? <laughs> You're ridiculous. All they want is the good old dinero. <laughs> Look at the monkeys. <laughs> Little 20. Hey, I will keep the change. <laughs> Let's get some of these while we're getting as good. <laughs> Look, boss, three brand new 20s. I know. They're from the bats that Bud and Jeff took out. That must be the Jasper that's been hijacking us. Pour yourself a drink and wash the chili out of your throat. <laughs> oh, what a place. What a place. How'd you like to turn at the roulette wheel? This is it, senor. <laughs> oh, but I cannot. My luck, she was not so good last night. Well, if your luck doesn't get any worse, you're all right, baby. <laughs> Come on here, sweetheart. <laughs> Come on, give the lady a big stack of chips. <laughs> the next time the red, she wins. But I have no more money. Don't you let that bother you. Always play your hunches, baby. Oh, but my, what you call hunches, it costs you a lot of money. Don't worry about that. I've got lots more where that came from. Oh, you must have a machine that makes the money, eh? I have. This is it. <laughs> you make the fun. <laughs> All of it on the red, two in. On the red, bet your money and sleep in the street. A millionaire today and a cat <laughs> tomorrow. It looks like some of that dough you had beat you back here. All of it did. Back my play. The little ball goes round and round and round and round. And where it drops, somebody loses money. It's a rule of the house. Now watch it, sister. I'll take this on account. Why you? Look out, Tim! Well, the next time I won't be shooting at bottles. What's up? This fellow made a play for trouble. You better keep him off me if you want him to live. Why, well, he stuck me and Jeff up over Eagle Rock. Took all our dough and what? Any chance this isn't the fellow, bud? Well, I 
Might be mistaken, but it was enough like you to be your twin. I understand we all have double. How much do you lose? All we had. Fifty. Fifty? Make all this fuss about fifty dollars. You make me sick. All right, boys. A little music. <laughs> Tell Charlie I'm using his office for a little while. And make sure that nobody gets close enough to over here. You excuse me, Senor Tim. I must put this away. Oh, certainly. That's all right. Go ahead. Wait a minute. If Senor Charlie, he look for me, you to tell him I will be right back, eh? Where are you going? I want to hide this. I do not want to lose him, eh? Wait a minute. The boss oh, said... no, 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 no. <laughs> Now, let's get the straight of this. What happened? A couple of federal men stopped at the Eel Rock. Federal men? Yeah. You mean to tell me that digger out there is a federal man? No, he showed up afterwards and got the drop on all of us. Where's the federal man? Dead. Killed them both. Ran off the horses and beat it with money. Well, he may be smart, but something tells me that he isn't going to keep that money very long. Perhaps I can help you find what you're looking for. All you need is a little more light. Why, I thought you were... What's the matter with the Spanish accent? Light? <laughs> I do not understand, senor. Don't you? Well, neither do I. I see I go now. Just a minute. Why don't you finish looking through the saddlebag? You might as well. Although I can tell you beforehand, you won't find anything in them. Oh, I'm very sorry, senor. I see you threw money away. I think maybe you would not miss the little I would take. Oh, so we're back to the Spanish again, eh? Oh, why you make fun with me, senor? Why don't you drop this masquerade? Sit down over here. I'd like to find out what this is all about. Right there. Now tell me, who are you? I am Senorita Dolores Lopez. <laughs> I hate to contradict a lady, but you're no more Spanish than I am. Why you say that? Because tonight when they tried to shoot me in the saloon, you forgot your accent and spoke perfect English. Now come on, who are you really? I'm Joan Doyle. Joan? The Sap Doyle, your father? Yes, where is he? Don't you know? I wouldn't be asking you if I did. Where is he? How should I know? Did you shoot him like you did the two federal men? We're trying to find him. How do you know about that? I overheard Bud telling Sharp. You shouldn't believe all you hear. Maybe this will clear things up a bit. Federal Bureau of Investigation? Hmm. I don't understand. Well, the two men I'm supposed to have killed were working with me. Then the hold-up was staged? Sure. Oh, I can't tell you how happy I am that you're here. Now we can work together. Your life won't be worth very much if they find out Doyle is your father. Oh, I've been pretty careful. Although at times I've been terribly frightened. Why don't you clear out while you've got a chance? No, I don't intend to sit by helplessly while my father's life's in danger. Well, all right then. What have you been able to find out? Do you uh, know where the plant's located? Well, all I know is that it's out of town someplace. I've been trying to follow them, but I've always lost the trail. Well, tomorrow morning we'll go out together and see if we can pick it up. Better come along now. I think I'd better take you home. I've been able to follow them. Well, have they always headed in that direction? Yes. Looks as though we're in luck. Here comes one of Sharp's men now. 
Well, he may be kind enough to tell us where the plant's located. Yes, I'm sure he'll be able to help. All of Sharp's men are such kind, generous fellows. Mm. Well, you better head back to town. I'll handle this. Well, good luck, Tim, and be sure and let me know what happens, will you? I will. Sorry to have to stop you, but I'm on my way to Sharp's Ranch. I don't seem to remember where it is. Thought maybe you could tell me. Just skipped my mind, too. Your horse seems to have a better memory than you have. You'll probably find him at Sharp's Corral, if you ever get back there. Stan's horse. I wonder where he is. You certainly are a couple of smart boys. Well, there's no use in crying over spilt milk. You've been outsmarted, that's all. We've been outsmarted by that fellow Hayes for a long time. I'd like to get my hands on him. That shouldn't be hard to do. Now, don't reach for your hardware. This is a friendly visit. That's better. You've got a couple of hundred thousand dollars of my money. <laughs> your money is right. It's almost as good as that made by the government, but they don't turn it out as fast. You take a whole lot for granted. When I explain, you won't think so. Go ahead, I'm listening. I can get rid of everything you print without any danger. Well, now, that's interesting. How? Connections across the border. How about that money you lifted from me? I turned that as soon as I got it. Now, if you and I get together, I'll cut you in for your share. If we don't, I won't. If you could deliver, we'd be sitting pretty. If I couldn't deliver, I wouldn't be here. 
I'll take a chance on you. There's close to a quarter of a million dollars in that saddlebag. All in 20s? Yes. And we're having some new plates made, but they won't be ready for a while. Say, Sharp, before you start on those new plates, I'd like to talk to your engraver. I might be able to give him a couple of tips. Oh, he can take care of it all right. Well, when we get those, we'll make a clean-up, and then we can take a vacation. Oh, wait a minute. I think I'll send a couple of boys along with you. Oh, I can find my way out all right. Yeah, but can you find your way back again? <laughs> all right, the more the merrier. Send them along. Bud, take a couple of boys and go along with Hayes. You too. Well, so long. I'll be seeing you. Yeah, you look like a pack horse. Tim, all right. Let's see. Throw some brush on that fire so he can see the smoke. I thought you both were dead. They were. But you know, the climate down here. There's a quarter million dollars in his saddlebags. You better get it. Good. Ready to close in? Just about. Where's the plant? Five miles the other side of Topek in a place called Lost Canyon. We'll put these fellows under lock and key in the radio station and go with you. Well, I can't wait. I'm afraid they might kill Doyle and destroy the plate. But you can send some rangers up there. I may need help.
Yes, I understand. <laughs> Leave it to Tim Hayes to tear out ahead. He doesn't know the meaning of the word caution. Sure, I'll have men on the way as soon as they can climb into their saddles. Now, give me the exact location of the place. Yeah? Yeah, I got that. The place is owned by a man named Sharp, posing as a mining engineer. Okay, that'll be easy to find. I'll start the men right out. I'm getting impatient, Doyle. How much longer are you going to be? You can't rush a thing like this. It takes time. You've been telling me that for weeks. And if you don't stop bothering me, I'll be telling it to you for years. Well, it certainly didn't take you long to close that deal. The shop around? Inside. I've got some bad news for him. Yeah? Thought you were headed for the border. I was, but we were ambushed. I was the only one to get away. Somebody around here is tipping off the G-men. So this isn't a safe place. We better hightail it across the border to my place. We'll be safe there. Wait a minute. What is all this? Now, there's no time to argue. They'll have to hit in here any minute. We've got to move fast. I caught her snooping around outside. Now, hold it. Wait a minute. What's going on here? That guy roped me off of my horse and tried to force me out to tell him to get here. That's the only way I could find where your place was located, Sharp. We can talk about that later. Let's grab those plates and get out of here. Yes, but you shouldn't have come. You've only put yourself in danger. Get that girl out of there. Hold it. Break that door down and let them have it. Stand back out of the way there. You better gather up those plates and get out of here. No, you can't go that way. This is the only exit. All right, blast the lock. in case you need it.
It's been a long trail, Sharp, but you've come to the end of it. I'm arresting you for counterfeiting and murder. There you are. All right, just a minute. <laughs> and, uh, that'll cost you just one dollar. Oh, well, that's easy. There you are. Thank you. Hey, wait a minute. This is a phony $20 bill. So? <laughs> Have you any money? Say, hey, who's supporting this family anyhow? Well, looks as though you're going to start. There you are, my good man. One dollar. I wonder. <laughs> <laughs> 